So these, so we call these rainbow charts for obvious reasons. And we have, um, I'm just arranging a couple of things on my screen here. So this is XLY, this is consumer discretionary. Uh, it's currently one of those top three. So what we have here is one year's data going backwards daily. And this shows the daily ranking in CIF for that time period up on top. Favorite is green, neutral is yellow, and avoid is red, just like on the graphic that I showed you two minutes ago. And down here is the corresponding relative performance chart of, um, in this case, XLY versus SPY. So you can kind of see here when, when consumer discretionary moved into favorite territory, what have we got? Let's call this the beginning of May through midway through July of last year, right here. That fueled all this relative outperformance by XLY. Uh, you can see the same thing happen here during the fourth quarter of last year. We had this extended move into favorite territory and we had some outperformance. This is relatively new. This is from February the 5th. XLY moved into favorite territory and XLY has outperformed the S&P by 2% since then. So that's the purpose of these charts is so you can understand that there's a relationship between favor and relative outperformance and avoid and relative underperformance by that sector. So we make these for 11 sectors, uh, you know, for all of the 11 sectors. Let's look at another one. The next one is going to be industrials because that's a new move into the top three here. So you should be able to see industrials now. And what we're showing is this very new move back up into favorite territory right here. And we've gotten a little wiggle our way. We've gotten a little bit of relative outperformance over the past week or so. So going back and looking across the chart, when it was in avoid territory this time last year, beginning of March through the beginning of May, that coincided with all this relative underperformance by XLI, which is the ETF for the industrial sector. Um, we had a period here, let's call it middle June through middle of August of last year, and that fueled this little bit of relative outperformance. So this is the relationship between these asset flows and what happens to that particular sector relative to the S&P 500. Let's look at a couple more real quick because it works on the downside too. So we're gonna stop share and we're gonna make a new share. And now we're gonna look at energy, which is one of the bottom two this week. Okay, so here's energy and you can see we moved into energy moved into a void status on November 24th, right before Thanksgiving of last year. And with a couple of exceptions here on Feb 1 and Feb 21, where it got to neutral, it stayed there. Look what's happened to energy. It's underperformed by 9%. So in addition to trading the model itself and always investing in those top three and rotating whenever the money moves, we move with it. This can also tell you what to avoid. I've been talking to people for the past two or three months that kept telling me that energy is so cheap. Why don't we buy energy, John? Isn't it a good deal to buy energy? No, why? Because the money is leaving there. We don't want to be the first guy in a good idea and have to get beaten up for two months um, and hold a loss until our ship comes in. This tells us when to start you know, moving into something. Here's a perfect example. This is last year, beginning of April, through the beginning of July, we were stuck in avoid territory in XLE and look what happened through relative performance. XLE was underperforming SPY. Then we had this really sharp move here, latter part of July, that for the most part stayed in favorite, favorite territory until the end of October of this past year. And look at this relative outperformance. So the CIF model can tell, tell you not only what to be in, but what to what to avoid. I think the avoid is every bit as important as what to be in. Uh